Take 10 minutes of your time to share our thoughts on how the structure of joint ventures and the use of subcontractors may be optimised when delivering the project successfully. The thoughts are on the basis that all of us should feel jointly responsible for the course the project will take and that we should use our collective experience to obtain maximum benefits. Let's start then with start then with yeah, joint ventures. Now, as we all know, the establishment of a joint venture for a project of this complexity is a challenge within itself. So when considering the formation of a joint venture, let's begin by examining the key aims and aspects which are likely to be addressed when assembling the group. The members of the group should really feel jointly responsible for the entirety of the task of the joint venture. It's a team effort in delivering the whole of the work, so not in piecemeal fashion, piecemeal fashion according to the relative scope of each joint venture partner. Members of the joint venture should have an incentive to help each other. The reward should be based on collective achievement and not individual achievement. So the members should act collectively to ensure the purpose of the group of a whole as a whole is achieved, which is the success of delivery of the project resulting in, and there's a choice of adjectives here, I work for contractors, so I use the adjective reasonable profit. Um, there should be a spirit of cooperation. This sharing of results increases the interdependencies amongst the members and strengthens the need for the collective efforts. The objective is therefore, and we've heard it earlier today, a win-win situation. Here it could be win-win-win win for the joint venture, which knocks on to a win for each partner, plus, of course, a win for ourselves as the owner. Now, as far as the joint venture's contractual relationship to feminism is concerned, the joint venture partners will be jointly and severally liable, and there will be the usual contractual instrumentation in place to accommodate that. However, we do consider that the spirit of mutual support to be of utmost importance would like to have confidence that the arrangements are in place amongst the joint venture members to produce a successful outcome. The successful outcome would naturally be that the aspirations of the project with regard to quality, time and safety are realised. So what joint venture model can best achieve these aims? We have what is commonly known as a non-integrated joint venture. As we all know, this is where each partner is individually responsible for a divine, defined portion of the words and all the risks and rewards associated therewith. We do not see this as the ideal model. Um, we believe it re results in sub-optimization, ultimately at the expense of the project. In our view, the purpose that we're talking about is best served by an integrated joint venture. This would provide the benefit of not only having a clear communication lines, but also the joint venture having a representative who can provide an overview of the project perspective as a whole. Naturally, we recognise that as businesses, the partners may identify alternative models. So consequently, we set aside an aspect in the competitive dialogue process to try and help us understand the structure of your joint venture and how it operates. On a final note, as Klaus Dennis had mentioned earlier, it would naturally be advantageous if there was some German and Danish involvement in the joint venture. There will be numerous issues which will require the knowledge of each country's particular authorities, permits, bodies, public bodies, which interface with the project. Let's move now then to subcontracting. Now we recognise that the world's experience in delivering projects of this complexity is sitting in this room today, and that the delegates will have tried and tested the policies on how they subcontract their works. However, I'm sure you'll appreciate that as an owner, our interest is that the entities which are engaged in whatever form are capable of meeting the challenges of the project. 
there must be sufficient competence within the group itself to achieve this goal. And the group must have full and active control over any subcontracted work that accept the associated responsibilities. Now, of course, we, we understand we cannot generally dictate towards the decision as whether an entity should be a joint venture partner or it should be a subcontractor. However, a model which we will find really, shall we say, less than acceptable is that of what's called a management contractor, which we all know is, is a company that's really just subcontracts the various portions of the work to other, other companies and doesn't really do any work itself. Uh, as I say, we, 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 will, we will not uh, be party to this. Um, and we will only accept a joint venture partner, really, that has the, necess the necessary, what we call the three C's. They must have the capacity, the competence, and the capability to be able to execute significant parts of their works on their own accord without some contract. And will utilise the pre-qualification process to try and ensure this. In the employment of subcontractors by the joint venture, we'll be looking for some sort of comfort, as I say, that the decisions to subcontract key portions of the works and selection of relevant subcontractors and associated supervision is done in a way that brings the exposure to the project to an absolute minimum. Returning to the earlier point of uh, integrated joint ventures, the integrated joint venture model, we also see this as a benefit when talking about subcontracting. And it would appear beneficial to the unity of the joint venture if subcontractors were subcontracted to the joint venture itself rather than to its individual members. And once again, with regard to the aforementioned matters on subcontracting, we do recognise the complexities of the business issues involved. And we've set aside a, a dialogue aspect and a competitive dialogue to accommodate this. So it's just a very short presentation, but thank you for your attention.